sometimes the beam goes right through it, the part will fly apart and yeah. get sucked into the dust collector or whatever. Boy Scout fire, basically. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of Cutting Corners Behind the Scenes. Today we're going to talk about our CNC routers. Yeah, so we have a lot of different CNC routers across all of our locations, and they're specialized to cut different materials that our lasers have no effect, they're non-conductive, maybe they're toxic for yep. us to cut them on those, and we have delamination problems for the water jet, that kind of stuff, right? So these are going to be specific materials that are going to say it on the website when they're going to be cut on the CNC router. Yeah, uh, if we can cut it on laser, we love to cut stuff on laser because they're incredibly fast, efficient for us. Um, but a lot of materials, uh, laser will have no effect. Sometimes the beam goes right through it and does nothing, or it just lights it on fire immediately. Like Jake said, with water jet, sometimes we will have uh, materials that are sensitive to water. Like once they get wet, they swell up like wood. Yep. Um, or delamination issues. So the CNC routers are great for wood. Uh, they're great for Delrin. They're great for ACM, you know, a bunch of our, our other materials. There are some limitations though. Uh, number one, we're using a, a bit instead of a laser or a, a very small water jet. Yeah, and that in mill bit, right, has a size constraint to it. So we have a minimum hole size that you're gonna see on CNC routered parts. And that's due to having a minimum size end mill that we can create those holes with. Yep. And additionally, since it is a round end mill, we're also gonna see round corners that are inside of our parts yeah. on the internal geometry. We can't do any internal geometry that's perfectly square. There's no 90 degree yeah. corners here. It's It's gotta be the radius of the tool. Uh, and that goes also for external geometry where you have an, an inter, like a, a convex yep. radius instead of a concave, or concave, sorry, instead of a convex, right? Yep. So anytime you see that, you're gonna see a radius on the CNC router. Yep. Um, the other limitation is uh, overall size. So we are using a, a huge vacuum basically to hold the material down onto the table. Uh, you can't really tell, but we use uh, MDF and then a vacuum table below it, we actually can pull vacuum through the MDF because it's semi-porous. Yeah. Uh, but we're, we're pulling that vacuum to get, what, 10 inches per um, square yeah, inch or yeah. something like that in order to hold material. But what happens is on very, very small parts, uh, if there's not enough vacuum to hold it, as the bit comes around and moves it, the part will fly apart and yeah. get sucked into the dust collector or whatever. So we do have some minimum limitations. The other thing to expect is tabs. Uh, we have, in order to hold it in there, we have little tabs that we make. Yeah, and the end mill essentially just picks up, leaves a little bit of material and comes back down on the outside profiles, yeah. leaving that little bit of a tab. Yeah, however, we detab. So on these materials, we'll clip the tabs off. Sometimes we'll sand it a little bit and make it nice for you. But just have your expectation that you may have to do a little bit of cleanup work yeah. on some of these materials. A small witness mark may be noticed. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So to talk about this machine right here, we have essentially a heavily modified shot saver machine right here. Yeah. It's a CNC router, right? So that's the, it is. But this is a gantry machine. And what I mean by gantry machine is that the cutting head, so we have our spindle motor right here that has our CNC router bit mounted into it, is going to be moving across this large gantry here. This gantry transit uh, transitions all the way down and up on the table. And the reason why that's important on a CNC machine like this is it allows us to cut sheets up to four by eight yep. on this machine, which instead if you had, if you think about moving a four by eight sheet back and forth in order to cut it, you'd have to have a machine the size of this room. Yeah, the material is stationary, the head is moving, whereas in something like a Haas UMC 750, yep. uh, you're moving the X and Y, yeah. so, and, and so the B and C. That transition, that gantry setup is what, what allows us to do those larger sheets, but it does come at a cost where there's a little bit more flex and stuff in it, yeah. but with these nicer machines like this, we don't really see anything at all. Yeah, this is from their IS series. Uh, which is Mitsubishi Control. I think we hold two thou across the entire table. Our guarantee is plus or minus five thou, but still like definitely as accurate as you need to be in a lot of these materials. Exactly. A lot of our materials won't hold that. Like wood, wood is gonna change based on moisture and uh, uh, humidity and everything else by more than five thou. So we're, yep. we're well within that. For work holding this entire table, like Jim already talked about it, we're using a vacuum on the backside that's pulling it through there. There's actually four different sections in which we can pull vacuum on so we can control it and increase the amount of vacuum that we have on the parts. 
that helps reduce the size of the part that we can cut, kind of making it as, as, as improved as possible. Yeah, I think we use a Kaser vacuum. It's like 20 or 30 horsepower, mm -hmm. or 30 yeah. or 40 horsepower. It's a massive amount of horsepower that we're throwing into vacuum, trying to keep these things still while we're cutting. Yeah. Um, and as well as dust collection too. Yeah, we have dust collection. So we have large dust collectors that are pulling off all of our CNC routers into one location. That's moving all of those chips and cuts that we're gonna be removing from your parts, leaving just a good part at the end. Yeah. That chip removal helps improve bit longevity. It also improves the quality of the cut on the parts so we're not recutting chips. So this is all just for quality and safety really for the operator. Yeah, they only catch on fire once in a while. <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, occasionally, like if we're running an old bit through thick wood, it'll start to start like a Boy Scout fire basically. And those little embers will go into dust collection. So we have to be careful about that. And then um, one last thing on this machine is that it does have an auto tool changer. This allows us to change bit sizes throughout the entire cutting process. We wanna use the largest bit possible to cut out your parts. One, it's faster for us, and it also normally use, it has a better cut quality, have better chip removal, but for the smaller holes, we have to switch the bits. This allows us to do it without the operator doing it, makes it faster, yep. cleaner cuts. But because of the limitations, we're only allowed 10 different pockets or 10 plus one pockets. Um, we have to be very limited on our tooling. So if we had 100 pockets, we could do a little bit more. Um, as we start to evolve the machine, like I said, we've, we've made our own modifications to this one. Uh, we may be able to modify others and add more tools so then we can give you guys more variety in the future. Yeah, so, that's it. I, I think that's it. So anyway, uh, to get a price on your design, upload your step or DXF file to sendcutsend.com. Check out the merch store while you're there. Yep, love you, buddy. Love you. Bye.